What's up? How y'all doing? I've never tried this before. This, I think this is supposed to be the white claw of energy drinks. That's pretty good, actually. Okay, we'll keep that in mind. This is the creakiest chair on planet Earth. It's gonna make for great sounding videos. Look, I got a new pizza cutter. We're gonna talk more about this in a second. This, this is what you use to cut the pizza dough. <laughs> I have no idea what this one is. Why would they put the packing slip right over it? Oh. Interesting. Colors. I literally had no idea what was in this box. Here's all the colors of track that Fabric Mate uses Lunch, along with some papers and two samples of their insulation their sound absorption uh, i want to talk about acoustic treatment in this video as you can see i'm in my makeshift very very much temporary space because uh, i'm building the new room out right now let's talk about acoustic treatment and diy acoustic treatment you're gonna see a whole bunch of footage of like me tearing my room down and like exactly how I made my old panels and exactly how you can make the old pan the panels that I used to use. And then we're gonna talk about the new room and how I treated the new room with the new fabric wall system. So let's look at the old room and how my old panels are made right now. It's moving day. I'm super, super pumped and super, super exhausted. So I wanna talk about these acoustic panels right here. I've had a ton of people ask me about these over the years and uh, it's be a good opportunity since they're all coming down to actually take a look at them and explain them and how I hung them in an apartment. So one of the things that probably no one ever realized is that there's a window right here. So this big double panel just comes right off the wall. There's a whole window there. So this is the acoustic panel right here. This acoustic panel is made out of metal studs. Uh, they're the three inch metal studs. And I literally just screwed them together. This piece right here is called the track. This would be what goes on the floor. This would be your bottom plate uh, along the floor of a stud wall because these are metal studs. And so these would be along the floor or along the ceiling. And then these are actually the studs that just screw inside of a U. Wow, those are dusty. <laughs> They've been hanging in here a few years. This material right here is called Echo Cell. Those are two studs right there, back to back. And the cool thing about this is it creates a, a track. You just shove the insulation in there, and um, that's really, really easy to just stuff insulation in there. So the fabric is just a frame of like half inch by one inch wood, and I just Put this frame together you can almost kind of see a little bit of the the edge of the frame right there i just put this frame together stretched the fabric and stapled the fabric over it so i built this metal frame and then this frame out of wood and then stretched the fabric over it and then the frame with the fabric got stretched or got screwed from the inside that's what these holes are for got uh screwed inside here uh, so that way it holds the fabric frame to the metal frame and then you just stuff the insulation in there and that's how I've made all my acoustic panels and then the hooks in the wall come out like that and that's all the more they are everything in here is hanging on those little drywall hooks that you literally just you literally just take it and you, you shove it through the drywall and then it goes punk. And that's how I hung all my acoustic treatment in an apartment. So for those of you that are interested in making your own acoustic treatment, when I was talking in one of my earlier videos about broadband absorption, um, this is the, what I'm talking about. You want something that absorbs a full frequency spectrum. 
The issue with some of the foam stuff, some of the Oralex that's real popular, uh, that doesn't absorb very deep into the low mids, or and it does basically nothing for the low end. And so what you run into is rooms that sound kind of boxy and, and uneven and unnatural because they're really great at absorb, absorbing all the high end and all the high mids, but the lower you go in the frequency spectrum, the less foam does. And so when I was talking about broadband absorption, this is what I'm talking about. Uh, this particular stuff is called Echo Cell, uh, E-C-O-C-E-L-L. -L. Unfortunately, I got this in Illinois and I can't find a distributor here. This is a recycled newspaper product. Love that it's green, love that it's a recycled product. Um, and it actually has some of the best numbers on the market. This is a three inch version. And so it absorbs low end, like down in 80 and 100 hertz, it absorbs much, much better than a lot of other products. The most common product that you're gonna see is probably Owens Corning 703. It's a compressed fiberglass board. Um, that's probably the most common, kind of the industry standard when it comes for acoustic treatment. Uh, and then there's also Owens Corning 705. And basically the difference between 703 and 705 is 705 is compressed harder, so it's, it's more rigid, it's, it's stiffer. So you lose a little bit of absorption in some of, I think in some of the mid range in the upper end a little bit, um, but you gain some absorption in the low end. And so, and then there's all different thicknesses. There's one inch, two inch, I think there's even three inch and four inch. And if not, you can stack them anyway. So then you use the type of acoustic treatment, the, the actual material itself based on its absorptive, absorptive, absorptive <laughs> properties. Uh, and you choose your thickness and the type and how much, how many layers you use and how far off the wall it is and it, it, obviously its location. And you choose all of these things together. They, they all work together to create a good sounding room. You can actually measure the distance between walls and between ceiling and floor. And you can find the frequency of the standing waves in your room because every room that is a box is gonna have standing waves. If you want to Google, you can Google room node calculator. And basically what that does is you can input the dimensions of your room and it's gonna tell you where the, the nodes are. And basically what the nodes are is issues within your room that occur at a specific frequency, usually in the low end or the low mids. And so what you'll find is, is like you put your, your room dimensions in and you're gonna find that maybe your particular room has an issue at 30 hertz, 60 hertz, 120, 240, uh, which, cause those are the octaves. And so you might find that that's your issue. And then, so what you have to do is you have to build bass traps to control 30 hertz, and then the rest of them will kind of sort themselves out. But there's this acoustic treatment thing and tuning a room is super in depth. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to put some information out there as I work through this. Um, I'm not an expert on this. I've just done a ton of research and I've built a handful of rooms and I've tuned a handful of rooms and I've had really great results. And so hopefully this will help someone who's ready to dive in and do it on your own. If you wanna build your own, there's a bunch of ways to do it. I kinda of like this metal stud way because one, it's super easy. It's so easy, you just take a pair of tin snips and you cut these and you just use sheet metal screws and screw them together. I can build a frame like this in about five or 10 minutes. And uh, the front frame for the fabric to stretch the fabric around takes me about 15 minutes to build one of those frames. Um, and a panel like this, a, a double panel that's, that's uh, four foot by four foot, total cost insulation, studs, fabric, and frame for the fabric and the screws. Total cost for a panel like this is probably in the in the maybe $20 range, 20 or $30 range to build it by myself. And it takes me, you know, the first time you do it, it'll take a little bit longer, but I can build one of these panels in a, you know, 30 minutes total to have everything totally done. And so once you experiment, and that's why I went with the metal stud thing, it wasn't even originally for aesthetic, it was just, it was the easiest, cheapest, fastest way that I could build something. And it looked pretty cool too. Um, so anyway, that's why I went this route. If you can, if you're handy at all and you're willing to tackle this on your own, you can save a ton, a ton of money. So like this ceiling cloud here, this ceiling cloud is four foot by eight foot. 
it's built exactly the same way as this wall panel, except it's much larger. Now a ceiling cloud like this can cost you anywhere from $800 to about $2,000 to buy one that's built and ready to hang. That ceiling cloud cost me somewhere in the range of 150 or 200 bucks to build. And it, it takes some time, no doubt, but all my panels currently are the exact same design. In the new room, it, I'm gonna have a whole fabric wall system, so it'll be, it'll be totally different. But this is how I built all my panels. Uh, they're in the ceiling cloud, I just put um, eye bolts and then uh, put drywall anchors, because again, I'm in an apartment building here. <laughs> Uh, it's so ridiculous. So I just, inside the, the ceiling cloud is eye bolts, and then I just got the big, big heavy duty drywall anchors where you drill a big hole, and you like, you push this stuff up through the hole, and it like pops open and hangs. It's supposed to support like 40 or 50 pounds. Um, so there's four of those holding that, and then I just use thick baling wire to hang it and level it. And you measure each corner and get it all leveled. Um, but the, one of the cool things about this construction method for acoustic panels is they're super, super light. I mean, I can pick this one up with one hand. Um, that whole ceiling cloud maybe weighs 30 or 40 pounds. It, it doesn't weigh hardly anything for a 4 by 8 foot ceiling cloud. And so that was the other reason that I went with this steel stud route is because they're super light and that makes your mounting system, however you're going to mount them on, on a wall, that makes that a lot more flexible and you have a lot more options for how you want to mount. The beauty about this system, not trying to convince you guys to do this metal stud thing, just telling you the pros and why I decided to do it. The, one of the pros is super, super lightweight. And so when you're in an apartment building like this, you then have the ability to actually hang a real ceiling cloud made with real broadband absorption that's really really effective and you're not tearing your apartment all up you're not going to get fined or lose your deposit or anything because when this ceiling cloud comes down there's going to be four holes in the ceiling that are you know that big just just tiny little holes and so it's a super effective way to do it without causing any damage and but mainly because it's so lightweight. If it was any heavier, the mounting system would have to be much more substantial, which would cause much more uh, long-term damage in the room when I moved out. So the new studio is all the fabric wall system, uh, and it's literally uh, fabricwall.com, I think, is the company that I got the track from. It, this is a really difficult system to like figure out. It, it's so elusive, like all the pro studios, damn near all the pro studios have a fabric wall system, um, except you can't really find anything about it online. All the websites for all the companies are super vague and it's super hard to find like step-by-step -step instructions or any information about it. I wanna talk about that for a second and then we'll look at my new room and, and how I'm building it and how the fabric wall system works. So there's two main companies that I could find that did the track for the fabric wall. Cut to look at the track right now. So there it is. So that's what it looks like. That's the end of it. So you mount this on the wall and you lay your insulation in here and then your fabric wraps over and gets tucked in here. So that's what the track is like that you use on the wall and you stretch the fabric between. Um, and then you use these tools like this little guy and basically and this little guy and basically what you do is you put the fabric over the track and you push in you cut your pizza <laughs> and you push in the fabric into the slot in the track and that's the general idea how it works from what I could find there's basically two companies that do this sort of thing there's fabric mate and fabric wall and those are kind of the two main ones from what I could figure out. Again, this is all super elusive unless you're hiring a studio builder to do it. Doing it yourself, it's really hard to figure out like which way to go and any information about it. I ended up going with Fabric Wall and I'm really glad I did and I'm going to explain why. First of all, Fabric Wall, which I think it's fabricwall.com. Uh, but fabric wall, the track is like 40% less expensive. It's definitely the more budget option to go with. Fabric Mate has some options to like curve the acoustic treatment and like curve the track. They have a couple like unique 
cool options that fabric wall doesn't have. However, it's way more expensive. Someone did suggest to me to get the tools from Fabric Mate though, and so I did that. I got the tools from Fabric Mate. However, my experience even just ordering tools was pretty pretty rough. So, I ordered these tools online uh, through Fabric Mate's website and like three or four days later I get this email that was kind of worded pretty abrasively, uh, pretty condescending, I guess. And the email was from a lady that worked at Fabric Mate, and she basically said uh, they need to know what brand of track I'm using or else they're going to cancel my order. I think they said if they didn't hear back from me in like 24 hours that they would cancel my order. And I'm like, I placed an order on your website. There's only, you only offer one set of tools, so it doesn't matter. And then to, to wait days to reply and then say that you're going to cancel my order unless I tell you what brand of track I'm using. It was just a really unpleasant email uh, and a really uh, abrasive approach. Like, don't let people order stuff on your website if you're going to be that worried about it. But you only offer one set of tools, so it, it doesn't matter anyway. Ordered the tools emailed them back, told them I'm using the fabric wall track, didn't hear anything for like three or four days, had to email them again, and then they processed my order. Based on that experience alone, I would not go with fabric mate, I would go with fabric wall. Fabric wall uh, sells the same tools, I mean it's all the same stuff. There's like this little dough cutter thing, and there's a little pizza cutter thing. It's the same thing. All the, com the like the companies that I found, the three or four companies that I found, they all make basically the same tools. So I would go with Fabric Wall. I called up the people at Fabric Wall because their website wasn't very good either. None of the websites are very good. I called up the people at Fabric Wall, talked to a really nice lady at Fabric Wall. Uh, she was very helpful. Uh, I needed like price breakdowns because none of it was on the website. She emailed me a full price list and spec sheets and everything like 10 minutes after I got off the phone with her, called her back the next day, ordered what I needed, and it was here two days later. Super friendly people, super fast transaction, cheaper than Fabric Mate. I'm now a permanent Fabric Wall customer because of that. So. That's what I'm using, <clears throat> so uh, let's go look at the new room. Not literally right now, because I gotta finish working on it, but here's some footage of the <laughs> new room. I don't know what I'm doing with these videos anymore. By the way, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for giving me a thumbs up on this video. Thank you to all of you who have subscribed and hit the bell icon next to the subscribe tab. Thank you guys for leaving me comments. Thank you for sharing this video with your friends. You guys are literally the best. So, thank you. What up y'all, future Colt here. I mean, I guess not really because you just watched all that and now you're here to see more about the fabric track. So, the room is functional and I'm back to work. However, uh, there's gonna be a whole lot more videos coming up, so stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe. There's gonna be a whole bunch more videos coming up on the build of the room and a whole bunch more details, but there wasn't any real way to show off exactly how I finished this fabric track system, kinda until it was done. So, here's the deal. Let's find a good place to actually show you this. Here we go. This back half is temporary here. So this is it though. Um, it gets stapled to the wall, and then the insulation fits right here. Uh, the back half of this room is temporary because there'll be a booth right there, big booth in the corner. So I didn't take the time to do all the finish work on this until I finished the booth, but anyway. And then the fabric tucks into the little, it tucks into the little slot here, and that's what you use your rocker tool or the pizza roller and so basically you put this track up and then you put all your insulation in between the pieces of track and then you stretch the fabric as tight as you can over it and then you use those tools to push the fabric in this slot and so what you end up with is an entire section that is all I mean, there's seams because you can only go so wide. The fabric is only so wide. So there's seams, but it's 100% absorption there. 
Um, and so you can run both sides of the track into, in, or both sides of the fabric into one piece of track like this. Um, and it just turns out this very clean look where it's all fabric, but it's all absorption and 100% uh, absorption. And that's the fabric wall system. This is definitely the cleaner, more pro way to do it, but it's also more expensive. And it also takes a lot more work. Uh, it took weeks and weeks to build this out. But all the uh, most of the really pro studios have a fabric wall system like this. And I'm really, I'm really glad I, I went this route. Um, I really like this system. I really like how everything turned out. Um, and like I said, there's gonna be, uh, I'm gonna do a whole bunch more content just on how I built this stuff and some time lapses. And I had a bunch of people asking me for time lapses of the entire studio build. And so I wanted to do that. And so there's a, a whole time lapse video coming. But anyway, yeah, this is the setup for now. This is the fabric wall system is done. And um, yeah it turned out really good i'm very very happy if you have any more questions about either my other panels that i that were earlier in this video or this fabric wall system drop me a comment let me know i'll try to get back to everybody but i hope that helps someone because this whole fabric wall system is so it's so elusive it's so like hard to find much about it that i really wanted to do my best to like shed some light on how to do this if you still have uh some curiosity about how it goes up in the next video that i'll do which will be the time lapse of the build of this studio uh it'll be a lot more obvious as to how all of this goes together so make sure you stay tuned for that build video thanks so much for watching i really really appreciate all your guys support my youtube channel has just kind of exploded a little bit lately and and it's it's so awesome to me and i'm so grateful uh, that all of you are enjoying the content and enjoying the videos and uh, it it means a lot to me and I, I just I hope it helps someone I hope all these videos help someone so thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned for the rest of the build and a whole bunch more content and uh, yeah cool later